Hi, I'm Jan with Days for Girls. In this video, we're going to review how to make the serge liner. The complete instructions, the step-by-step -step instructions for making the serge liner are available on our website. That document will include many more details and special tips, information about fabric choices, and many other things that we can't cover in this video. This video is intended to be mostly a quick look at the process of putting it together. Before we start that, let's take a uh, quick review here of what is the purpose of the liner in the Days for Girls menstruation system. And the liner is made of flannel, which is an absorbent material. It is the absorbent layer of our system, and it works together with the shield. The shield has a waterproof barrier in it. That's covered in another video, by the way. And the um, liner is a approximately eight and a half inches a square piece when we're finished. And the reason we do it this way and then do a trifold is for several reasons, one of which it's for ease of washing and for quick drying. Anyway, if we fold it into the trifold, then we can tuck it here into the pockets of the shield and then it is uh, the absorbent piece, uh, essentially what some people would call the pad of the Days for Girls system. So now let's look at the steps to make it. Now the efficiency of the serge liner is uh, it comes in when we use long strips, but that's hard to show in this video, so in some cases I'm showing smaller pieces, such as we have here. To make a serge liner requires two pieces of flannel. In this case, I have matching ones. They don't have to match. Uh, one is a narrower one. We call that one the hot spot. And the other one is wide. To start out with, we either cut our pieces at the appropriate size. That information's in the document. Um, or we take our yardage of flannel and we could tear the strips. Also, they could be cut by rotary cutter. I'll talk about the tearing method at the end of the video. And when we place the two pieces together, we place them with dull sides together. Sewing people would call that wrong sides facing. And the, the reason for that is then we have, uh, it, it makes the liner somewhat reversible, and we also have pretty color on both sides, which is going to help to disguise stains on both sides of the liner. Now, uh, here is an example, again, of we have a narrower piece and a wider piece, and that's in a little bit more of a strips, longer strips. These strips can be as long as you like. I like to keep these strips in multiples of nine inches because eventually we're going to cut it into nine inch pieces. The next step then, after we have our pieces cut to the size or we have our strips cut, is we're going to take the narrow piece, which we also call the hot spot, and we're going to serge down both long ends of that uh, narrow strip. A little handy little tool that I keep by my serger is I have a piece of blue tape at the serger and I've marked on there the width of five and three quarter inches. After we've surged both sides of our narrow strip, we want it to be five and three quarter inches wide. So this way, I keep it right at my serger. I first go through, I do one side, then I can measure it up to my tape and easily see how much I'm going to have to cut off the other side as I'm going through surging to have it end up to be the right width. I'll show you this example now I had of this one. This is a, the wider piece is a mottled pink, and then um, we had this prettier piece with the stars here for the hot spot. And there again, we're going to place them wrong sides facing so that we have the uh, pretty pink on this side and also have a pretty pink side uh, here. And now the next step of the process is we take the hot spot and we center it down the width of the wide strip and we're going to stitch it on down. And that can be done, here I have the same thing, in 
the longer strip. The same thing is that when you position your, your narrow strip, try to keep it evenly down the center of that long strip. So the longer your strip is, it gets a little bit more tedious to position this. So you want to bear that in mind when you determine how long your strips are going to be. So after we have that narrow strip positioned down the center, we take it to our regular sewing machine and just do a straight stitch right down towards the edge of that uh, serge, uh, right on top of those serger stitches that secures the serger stitches and also attaches the hot spot to the wide piece all at the same time. And here is an example of that in a big long strip. And in this case, again, we had the same fabric on both sides. You can use two totally different fabrics, whatever you choose to do. The document does indicate uh, what type of fabrics are uh, more appropriate than others and what kind of color tones to use, etc. One of the main things we're looking at when we choose our flannel is, will it disguise stains? So anyway, there's the long strip with the narrow one attached down the center. Okay, the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to finish it off. And so we cut it into the nine inch pieces and our finished liner is supposed to be approximately eight and a half by eight and a half. So what we do in our sewing group is we cut them off into nine inch squares. Then when we go to the serger, we know how much to um, consistently cut off of each side to make it the eight and a half by eight and a half in the end. Now this particular one, um, some of our serger ladies like to uh, leave square corners. When we have the square corners, it means we have four corners where the stitches are loose and all need to be secured. Another way of doing it is to finish it off in uh, rounded corners. It's still approximately eight and a half by eight and a half overall, but we've got rounded corners. And by doing it this way, we have only one stop and start point because we're going to overlap, you know, wherever we started and then we finish. There's a small overlap. The beauty of that is then I can immediately take it to my sewing machine and do a few back tacks right over that area and use the stitches from the sewing machine to secure the start and stop point of my serger stitches. When we do it in the square, we have four corners that need to be dealt with. And the document from the website gives several different options of how to secure these um, threads at the end. And they must be dealt with in some way because if we just cut them and leave them, then it's too easy to pull a string in the hole uh, stitching comes out. Our Days for Girls kit is designed to last three years with proper care and it's important that we make the liner, it's going to get a lot of um, use over three years as well as uh, be washed sometimes in rugged conditions and so we want to make it as durable as possible. So definitely we need to deal with those corners and look at the document. It'll give you some suggestions of how to do that. Now in making those rounded corners, um, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to um, know when we've got a square piece and we're coming around with our serger, at, at what point do we start turning? So what I found is helpful for me is I have this acrylic, uh, little petal shape uh, item that I found in the quilt section of the fabric store and it has a nice rounded edge here and so I stack up a whole bunch of the uh, square uh, liners here maybe six of them at a time on my cutting table and with my rotary cutter I just put this on the corner and do a quick trim around and I can go around all four sides on about four or six of them at a time. It does go really fast. And then when I get to the serger, it's really obvious when we're coming along and it's time to start turning those corners. So that's a helpful tip. Now here's one where we've uh, done it with rounded corners. 
and uh, then we went to our sewing machine and secured the stop and stop start and stop point with just a few stitches right there. Now I do want to show you this one. Um, this is uh, I've labeled it wrong because it's not reversible. What we made a mistake on this one, and our mistake was, is we took our pretty hot spot and laid it right over top the pretty side of the other piece. And that made this side really pretty, but unfortunately the back side now still has a whitish tone to it, and that is not going to disguise stains very well at all. So we should have taken our hot spot and positioned it on this side with wrong side spacing. So I think that pretty much tells how to uh, make the whole serge liner. And before we quit, I'm going to quick go through what our quality points are. And then I would like to follow with a couple of useful tips that I uh, have regarding tearing your flannel into strips. So first of all, is the fabric correct? Is it absorbent? Is it the correct size? Is the liner in the end? Is it the correct size overall? Is the hot spot the correct width? Will the color and pattern of the fabric disguise stains? Are all serger threads secured at all corners or stop and start points? Is it neat in appearance on both sides? Is the stitching neatly done? And is the color and pattern of the fabric appropriate? Again, all the answers to those questions can be found in the document which is liner instructions on our website. Now, let me move this out of the way real quickly. And uh, I want to show you these tapes that I've made. Now, when we start off with them, we need to make our strips. I used to cut them with a rotary cutter at my cutting table. And then someone showed me how I could tear the flannel and it goes so much faster and it tears into nice consistent width strips. So we don't have to worry about getting off as we tear a strip. So here I have this whole yardage. It's actually about 72 inches long. But here's the end of my fabric, which is about probably 42 inches wide or so. And what I made was two strips here, or two little um, cloth uh, tapes. And I labeled one for my serger narrow strip, or my hot spots, and I labeled the other one for the wide. And then I took on here and I measured it out very carefully at my uh, measuring table with a ruler and everything so that I could mark the uh, exact width that I want to tear those strips uh, into for the hot spot. And on the other one, I marked it. This blue may not show up quite as well. But I marked this one with the exact width that I want to tear my strips for the wide strips. Now remember, when we uh, surge, we do cut off some. So we don't want to tear our strips initially the exact width of our finished item. So anyway, by using the tape, I can go through, and you know the old carpenter's rule is measure twice and cut once. Well, when I made my tape, I could measure it and double check it so that all my marks are at the correct spot. Now, when I go to a sew day or have volunteers help with this, or if I'm doing it in the evening at home, I don't have to worry that I'm going to measure something wrong and tear my strips to the wrong size, because I can just lay this right on the edge, and then I take a scissor and snip little cuts right in the edge of the fabric there. And when I have all my snips done, I can just take the tannel, the flannel, and the uh, little snip is in there and just literally rip that flannel and it will rip into nice consistently uh, wide strips. And then I do the same thing for the wide piece using my blue tape. So that's a handy little tip. I hope you can make use of that. This video is a production of Days for Girls International. Thank you for watching, thank you for sewing, and have fun.